A powerful Russian force, possibly from the International Brigade, Pyat Nashka, tried to counter-attack Ukrainian forces near the village of Plekovo, liberated as part of the Operation Kursk and fell into a trap that the Russians themselves had created. The enemy launched a failed attack last week that targeted Plekovo, Forbes reports. The journalists added that there are two main Russian defensive structures near the town, anti-tank traps and a nearby complex of infantry trenches. The Russian column got stuck in anti-tank traps, a trench and a line of concrete barriers that the Russians built before the Ukrainian entry into the Kursk region in early August. On September the 29th, Ukrainian journalist Yuri Butusov shared on Telegram that in the area of the village of Plekovo, drone operators of the 129th Territorial Defense Brigade taught a lesson to the Russian occupiers and their equipment. They burned dozens of armored vehicles and eliminated enemy personnel. The Russian-made defenses that helped foil that recent Russian assault could have been a serious obstacle to the Ukrainian invasion, but weren't. According to captured Russian intelligence, the defenses outside Plekovo were garrisoned by several platoons and at least one company, all together with potentially several hundreds of troops. But the Russian troops in Kursk were caught off guard by the surprise Ukrainian attack on August the 6th and couldn't bring their significant firepower, including nearly 200 artillery pieces, to bear before the fast-moving Ukrainian mechanized troops were upon them. So the anti-tank traps and circular infantry trenches became Ukrainian assets. And unlike the previous Russian occupants, the new occupants from the 129th Territorial Defense Brigade fully accepted a counter-attack and were prepared to take advantage of the well-made defenses. It's credit to the Russian engineers who built the defenses outside Plekovo that these defenses worked as advertised and slowed an enemy assault long enough for the local defenders to deploy their best firepower that their comrades built effective anti-tank traps is surely cold comfort to the Russian troops who ultimately got caught in the trap, however. Forbes said, The war in Ukraine will end in a Korean scenario when after the cessation of active hostilities, the conflict will not have a final solution for many years. This opinion was expressed by the president of Serbia, Alexander Vucic, whose words are quoted by Ensusivo media outlet. In the end, peace will come. Others have already mentioned this, but I'm talking about it for the first time. That is why the fight will be for every village and every city and it will become more and more fierce and stronger. The Korean scenario will be achieved and then it will continue for 10, 20, 30, 50 years without a final solution. Just like North and South Korea were once divided, once a united country, Vucic said. According to him, although America will continue to fight hard against Russia in Ukraine, for the Americans themselves, the topic of the Russian-Ukrainian war is of secondary importance. Therefore, according to Vucic, America will first and foremost look after its own interests. At the same time, the Serbian president warned against underestimating the Russian army, as has already happened with the underestimation of the Russian economy, which was able to withstand sanctions. Recall from time to time, various public speakers predict a Korean scenario for the end of the war for Ukraine. Some, such as former NATO commander James Stavridis, consider this a good option for Ukraine compared to the alternatives. The Korean scenario is a comparison with the situation on the Korean Peninsula, where after the Korean War of 1950 to 1953, hostilities ceased, but a peace agreement was never signed. Korea remained divided into two states, North and South, which lay claim to all of each other's territory and do not recognize the legitimacy of their opponent. In the context of Ukraine, this scenario envisages the cessation of active hostilities but without a final political solution to the conflict. That is, Russia will de facto hold the occupied territories indefinitely, but Ukraine and the rest of the world will not recognize them as sovereign parts of Russia. Russia will also consider Kherson and Zaporozhye its territories, although they will remain under the Ukrainian control. Military aid to Ukraine in the amount of more than $8 billion 
allocated by the United States can contribute to serious changes on the front, according to retired colonel of the armed forces of Ukraine, Roman Svitan. In an interview with Yevgenia Kutnova for the YouTube channel Fabrika Novosti, the military expert said that in early October, while the weather is still dry, the armed forces of Ukraine can begin offensive operations in the Zaporizhia direction. The Russians sense that preparations are underway, so they have become more active on this section of the front. They are clearly preparing for resistance or counter-attacks. Sovitan emphasized the enemy can do the same thing that the Ukrainian army did in August in Kursk. Then the Russians turned around to move towards Sumy and we counter-attacked ahead of the enemy group and dispersed it. As soon as the occupiers see that we are deploying forces and resources in some directions, they will begin to act, the colonel said. This could be Vasilyevka, Erna Goda, Pologi, Skadovsk. There are many directions along the Zaporizhia front. Ukraine's first counter-offensive against Russia in September 2022 was extremely successful, with Kyiv retaking large swathes of its territory that Moscow had captured early in the conflict. But a second offensive launched by Ukraine in summer 2023 did not meet expectations, and some experts have said that Kyiv's military may not be ready for another one until next year. British Admiral Tony Radakin, head of the United Kingdom's armed forces, said that Ukraine's counter-offensive would most likely be launched next year, citing Kyiv's military struggles along the front lines with Moscow. Ukraine is struggling in terms of its ammunition and its stockpiles, and it is imperative for the rest of the world to respond to that, Radakin said at the event hosted by British think tank Chatham House. At the tactical level, you're seeing some Russian success, gaining relatively small amounts of territory. I think that's a predicament that's likely to last at least for the next few months, he added. And then we will have to see the Ukraine response with a new military leadership there.